What if I told you we could know exactly what your competitor's SEO strategy is and we could even steal that strategy? Remember, the whole point of SEO is to find the keywords that you want to rank for, create pages that target those keywords, and then show up on those search pages and rise the ranks over time. That's all it is. But what if you don't know exactly every keyword that you should be targeting? Well, that's exactly what we're going to be talking about. In this video, we're going to figure out how to do competitor keyword research, or as I like to say, stealing our competitors' keywords. Let's get into it. First things first, does it even matter? Should we be looking at our competitors' keywords? Well, here's the thing. If this is your first video on the channel, first of all, say hello by subscribing below, but also then yes, you should probably do this. But if you're following along, you can go back to our previous video from day three, where we were looking for our primary keyword, then there's a good chance you already have most of the keywords that you're trying to target. However, there is an exception to this. If you're in a large metro area, then there's a good chance your competitors are also using SEO agencies. Maybe you're not. And so what you can do by looking at their keywords that they're targeting, you can basically steal the research that those SEO agencies have already done, and then you can use that for your SEO strategy. So that's really the big benefit. If you wanna follow along with this right here, which is day six in our 30 day local SEO playbook, then head over to 30dayseo.com, get your free copy right now so that way you can follow along. So that's why keyword research matters. So we know what our competitors are targeting. And so the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna actually use uh, an SEO tool. We have to use a professional SEO tool to get this done. Now there's a couple options out there to do this competitor research. Uh, the two top dogs out there in SEO tool land are Ahrefs and SEMrush. I'm a big fan of SEMrush, but they're expensive. Ahrefs has this new like $20, $29 per month plan where you get more actions. So you can actually do this keyword research with a $29 per month plan. SEMrush has a free plan, um, but it's not actually gonna show us enough data to be useful. However, if you go to 30dayseo.com, you can get a free seven day trial of SEMrush. However, I encourage you to actually save that for when we get to needing the backlink gap tool, which is gonna be in week four, of the 30 day local SEO playbook. So just hang on to that for now. In the meantime, you can use the free version of SEMrush and you can get some information. And when you go to use your free trial, you can go back to this day and get even more data. Okay, so no harm in, in saving this video and coming back to it later, but just make sure that you get all the data when you do this. I'm going to walk through how to do this with SEMrush because it's just the tool I use every day. So let's get into that. So the tool we're gonna use in SEMrush is the keyword gap tool now to figure out what competitors we want to put in here, we have to start by doing a Google search. And so you should have gotten your primary keyword from day three from the 30 day local SEO playbook. So for right now, for web design, I'm trying to target bend web design. That's the keyword here. Now we're just outside of the map pack, number four right there. There's then can designs, uh, my lean and mean SEO agency that also makes amazing websites. And we're showing up just a little shy of the first page right now. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of love. Look at that right there in ninth, unfortunate, right? So, okay, so let's get our competitors. And so what I recommend doing here is going through the actual SERP and getting your competitors. Now don't click on them because that's gonna give them some, uh, some love. So just right click, copy a link address, go back to SEMrush and start pasting them in here. Okay, so we're gonna get the top competitors here. And if you see something like Yelp, now this is a specific Yelp listing for somebody, but if you see Yelp, you see Better Business Bureau, you see House, you see Andrew, you see one of those listicles, those directories, don't worry about that. Skip that. Only get the other local businesses in your area. And if you see two listings like we're seeing right here, only get one. Don't get two. Now when you're doing this, sometimes you're going to get this right here, which has subfolder, and that's because it's targeting a specific page. Now, especially for certain industries like general contractors and things like that, you do wanna go with subfolder. You don't wanna go with root domain. Later on, when we do stuff with backlinks, you wanna get all the backlinks for that domain. But in this case, we only want the keywords related specifically to that page because we don't want like really unrelated keywords. So let's go ahead and hit compare, and you should get a screen like this. 
Now the main place I like to look is down here for untapped, okay? These are the keywords that your competitors are ranking for that you're not. Now here's the problem is you're typically gonna get hundreds of keywords in this list and you're gonna quickly see that stuff like, um, you know, what the heck is Surf Lodge? I don't even know what that is. Uh, we're also getting branded results results for things like breweries, none of these are actually relevant. So there's some ways that we can really reduce this list um, and kind of save some of our time. And I have some of this written down here in the playbook. So doing things like filtering by intent, uh, reducing the amount of keyword difficulty, also checking the search volume, CPC, and just looking for trash keywords, and then finding those branded or relevant searches by using the advanced filter. So let's go check out those filters now in SEMrush. So the filters are up here. The first one I always like to do is just filtering down by commercial intent for local SEO. That's pretty much all we want. So now we're down to 111. That's great. We still got a lot of brewery searches. Uh, I'm also going to knock out any KDs that are above 40. Okay. Sometimes I'll go higher than that because sometimes there are some good results in the 40s. But let's just get rid of all those. And then now we're starting to get a little bit closer. And then to show you kind of how to use that advanced filter, like we're getting a lot of stuff for brewery right now. So if we click uh, exclude keyword right here, and maybe we'll zoom in here. I'll get my head out of the way so we can zoom in on that. Um, and then we'll just take out like brewery, brewer, hit apply. And then we can kind of keep going down the list here and see, you know, maybe there's some other things that we get rid of, like uh, farewell is one of the brand names here. So we can go exclude farewell and so now we're down to like 58 and we can kind of keep working our way down the list to kind of get rid of some of them and then ultimately what our goal is to export this list so you know once you get down to a reasonable number 50 is still kind of high um, so another thing that you can do to filter is to filter by including keywords so we can include keywords that contain uh, I'm gonna put bend I only want local searches uh, so that really brought it down. So now we only have 33 left. So now I'm going to go through and manually go through this list. <laughs> so funnily enough, there's not that much actually on the list because we've done so much SEO. I love it. Um, so now uh, what we can do, and you can kind of see this in the playbook too, is we want to kind of export our lists. And so SEMrush has this feature. I'll do it away from my head where you can do it in uh, CSV, Excel, uh, so I like to just do CSV, so it's just kind of like a raw version of it. And then I'll open up numbers here and kind of get that. Oh, whoops, it gave me all of them. So you got to check that box there to only do selected. There we go. That's much better. Um, and then now we have this information. And what we really want to do, if you've been following along in the last day, in day five, we learned how to do SERP tracking. And so we could copy this list and we can paste it in to our SERP tracker and SERP stands for search engine result page. And then that way we can watch the trend of how we're ranking for these. And we can try to um, find ways to target these with the content on our pages. Now, of course, this is a poor example because we've been trying to rank for this keyword for a long time. So we're doing all right. Just some random edge cases here. In situations like this though, I do like to consider potentially targeting an analog market. So looking for something, you know, in this situation, I might wanna look for another town around 100,000 uh, or, or also targeting a giant like metro area because there's probably gonna be more SEO going on there. So if we did something like targeting Portland web design, could we find some other keywords beyond what we found currently? So in this scenario, I'll just search for Portland web design and you can double check to make sure that's the right keyword. It's funny that an exact match domain is first. Go back to keyword gap tool, should start over uh, and then leave yourself at the top first and then go through and again, let's get four things. We'll get salt, that's funny, they show up in a lot of studies. Uh, let's just keep going down the list. See here's clutch, that's a directory and there's Upwork so we don't wanna include those. And once I hit the last competitor, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the fifth result, which is going to be these guys right here, gravi gravitate, and I'm going to make them be me in this situation. So they're the furthest down. And so now uh, there's not a lot of unique, but I don't care about unique, actually. What I want to look at is all this time. Okay, so I want to look at all the keywords. 
and so we got 117 keywords and now this is going to be interesting because it's actually targeting a different area than what we're targeting and so in this situation I'm still going to do the filtering you know I'm going to go down by you know let's do commercial intent and then I'm not so worried about the KD and everything else so let's just see so we got about 100 results here um, let's just since we're looking at web let's just do let's filter by web all right so we do an affirmative search so now it's only the web um, yeah it's only the web related search terms it's perfect and then what we can do is we can export this list CSV again and I'm not too worried about everything but what I'll do is I'll copy this and I'll take this over to chat GPT here's my prompt replace all instances of Portland or PDX with bend make sure there are no duplicates reprint just the keywords in plain text reformatting text is a great use case for chat GPT if this little thing pops up go ahead and hit X we just want our list there all right let's get this in and sure enough we have this here and what I can do now is I can take this list copy it put it in our SERP tracker and if we have any duplicates it'll cross out so we'll be fine uh, one thing I am noticing here is that there's also like stuff for Vancouver Washington and Portland Maine so we might want to filter this list a little bit more I have known that chat GPT is not the best tool for working with keywords but it can still you know it just moved us down the chain quite a bit so that was nice uh, but again if you're already tracking some keywords in your area and these end up being duplicates then that's fine and just like we mentioned in day three when we're looking for the primary keywords once you put stuff in your SERP tracker check back later if you have zero CPC or zero search volume then I encourage you to potentially remove those keywords unless you're really feeling confident that you want to track that data because you usually only get so many slots in your SERP tracker so you don't want to waste those on keywords that aren't super relevant and if you're a fan of spreadsheets you can put this stuff in a spreadsheet regardless so that way you can refer back to it later and then maybe every couple weeks in the early days and then eventually every couple months you can kind of double check to see if people are starting to rank for different keywords that you're not ranking for so the next time you're wondering how do I steal my competitors keywords you don't have to wonder anymore because you know and so if you found this video helpful you learned a thing or two maybe about keywords or how to use things like SEMrush then hit that like button below because it really helps the channel out be sure to subscribe so you can get the next video and then be sure to check out right here because right here we have the next video in our series which is day seven where we're going to be talking about what are we going to be talking about oh that's right we're going to be talking about GBP optimization in the meantime why don't you check out this video right here where we show you how to do a GBP audit and then you can check out this one where you can actually do the optimization. I'll see you in that one.